Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been what we needed. Your gardens, your landscapes, the forest, the parks, we they all needed the moisture that we saw this week. And you folks from tropical climates, you're all worried, going, oh no, can they handle the snow? We're going, yeah, that's four season climates or gardens. They 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 need it. They have to have it, or they suffer. You'll get disease, bugs, weeds, all kinds of stuff. So enjoy it. Bake some more cookies, sip some hot tea, cocoa, and enjoy the uh, snow as it melts. It'll be gone pretty quick. So this is why we live here, at least in the Central Highlands area. Now, I know you folks up in Flagstaff, the White Mountains, those areas, you folks love the snow, and I do too. Skiing is the best. But the rest of us, we like to go visit Flagstaff in the White Mountains and then come home where the snow has melted off by now. So it'll melt pretty quick. And so probably within a week already, I'm seeing it. It's half the size that it was, and it's only been a few days. So we almost need another storm or two. It'd be great to get all of our moisture before Valentine's, you know, middle of February. Then let it. Then as things start to bloom, the end of February, March, April, you don't want these kind of storms. This is when it can damage your fruit tree's blossoms. It won't hurt the tree. It'll just take the fruit. And so we want to have this this cold now so as we warm up, it gets nicer and nicer and nicer. So we get peaches and apricots and nectarines and apples and pears. We get our daffodils that don't get collapsed by snow. We get our, our lilacs that are in bloom that are just glorious and fragrant. So without the wet risk of, of weather taking the blossom, it won't affect the plant at all. It'll just affect the beauty and the longevity of that beauty or the fruits that come off. And so this is what we need. Bring it on. We'll take some more. Just don't snow on the weekend. So, you know, we got classes on Saturday when the the garden center is covered in snow. It is really awkward and crazy dangerous because slip and fall. I mean, we're we're an outdoor store. It's just, it's just, you're snow everywhere. And so I know you get to the greenhouses, but you got to traipse through uh, the weather to get up there. So this is where live streaming, oh, this is like magic. We're trying to up our game on this uh, garden class online kind of stuff. And so we don't have it figured out yet. It's like everyone. It's still kind of clunky. Bandwidth is still an issue. Uh, camera angles and audio. How do you get the lighting right? There's a lot to it to do it well. Anyone can do it. Can you do it well? And so now we've got, uh, for those of you that are in the, the, the video streaming kind of stuff, you know, StreamYard, that's how you have multiple cameras broadcast to several channels at the same time. So we now have the ability to broadcast to our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel, and we'll quickly add on to our Twitter channel and, and all the others. So Vimeo and all, all those. So it'll help us. And we can just not have just one dimension. We can have multiple cameras so we can get different angles because I'm quite honestly, I'm kind of energetic when I'm in front of a crowd. I tend to walk out of the camera shot. So <laughs> I'm going to go see, I'm going to go grab a tree and bring it back, but I'm off camera for, so the, uh, my producer can, uh, <laughs> can keep up with me. So we're trying to get better at this, this whole COVID world that we've changed uh, so I think this has been great for your landscape. Those of you that put wildflowers down before the snow, those of you that fertilized your landscape before the snow, those that got their soils ready, you turned, you add the manures and the fertilizers, the gypsums and the, all the, all the nutrient rich uh, elements that you put add to, to enrich a vegetable garden or a flower bed. If you did all that before the snow, you all are brilliant because your timing was impeccable. I know half the time it's an accident, but just knowing that we typically do get a snow in January, we never know how much. This is unusual for one event. I mean, we came in, well, Lisa and I came in on Monday. Let's see, this week, 
And we're just trying to scrape the garden. We're trying to keep up. We actually came into the garden center. We're not open because it's too dangerous to open with that much weather. We're not an inside store. We're an outside store. We came in to knock the snow off the evergreens to keep them healthy, keep them from breaking a branch or being damaged. And then to scrape off the parking lot some so that we could keep up with all the snow. Well, I was scraping that parking lot off in white out i couldn't see the front of the machine it's a 54 inch blade i could not see the front i couldn't see the blade it was crazy it was it was snowing so heavily actually i'm crazy for doing that in a white out but you, there's no the store's closed you can just kind of it's a big open space you can just try to scooch some of this stuff off so if it gets too deep you can hardly get to the parking lot it gets that bad so but i'll take it this is the beauty of, of a snow in the mountains. If you get a rain, like let's say it's a monsoon rain, which we didn't have any last year, but typically July, August, September, we get our summer rains. Those can come down so ferociously that very little of it, you get an inch of rain, but none of it soaked in. It ran off. It's great for filling up the reservoirs and getting the lakes back topped off, but it doesn't help your landscape as much. Snow is just the opposite. Snow doesn't fill the lakes up as much. It, it tends to permeate and, and saturate down into the soil bands. And so it's much healthier for the forest. This is really going to reduce bark beetle damage. It's going to help new tip growth, new, new uh, candle growth, new elongation of, of leaf and flower buds are going to swell. The candle growth on your evergreens are going to elongate, bud up. It's going to be, it's really helpful. And so here you can take the pressure off. You probably don't have to water for the next month. It's good, deep soak. But if we don't see any more, you'll just have to go nurture. Uh, this is why we also hold off on pruning certain kinds of plants. So roses, we wait until March because we just know this kind of event can happen. So we'll wait till we're kind of done with the harshest of the winter. Yes, it'll freeze. It'll frost. But it won't dump on us like this, and it won't be this, that bitter. I think it was 9 degrees at our house after the storm cleared out. That can damage certain plants. And so we want to keep that foliage up on certain kinds of plants. Others, I pruned back my junipers. I pruned back the, the sumacs and all the others, the, the summer blooming, the, the shaped up the evergreens. But I'm holding off on a couple, mainly salvia or autumn sage and roses. Everything else has kind of been pruned back. I also have not pruned back my lilacs because they're butted up so nicely. So this, this kind of weather pattern we've had this week will make your lilacs go crazy. You will have more flowers and larger flowers. Maybe not more because it's kind of too late to form buds, but it'll help the buds that are there to form larger buds. And so that will be important. It'll play out really well. This, if we get Another storm like this, maybe two, you will have an unbelievable wildflower show. I mean, the, the mountainsides will be covered in lupins and in different poppies. You, they'll just explode. Whereas it was so dry last week that uh, I, we, weren't, we weren't destined to have any kind of show at all. So we really, really needed this for the health of everything out in the forest, from wildflowers to your trees and shrubs. There's a lot in store for you. What I really want to go over is this event that happened um, is, is the perfect opportunity to spread a patch of wildflowers out in your landscape. I want to go deep into that. Just how do you do it? And how do you know what varieties of wildflowers are best? I'm not talking about the plants. I'm talking about the seeds. Yes, you could also add wildflower plants as well, which we will we'll sell. A good wildflower is going to be a perennial. That is, it comes back year after year. It not only seeds, so annuals typically come back by seed. They're going to pop up, grow, and then once they fade, they seed, and then they, they spread their seed out. And so it never comes back from the same root. A true definition of a perennial is it can go dormant. It can go below ground. It's subterranean right now. It can't be damaged by the snow and the weather and the cold because it's underground, hibernating. It's storing up its energy, waiting to take off in spring, but it will come back exactly from that same root. It will come back as a fresh, larger plant, let's say mums, asters, they're classic perennials. 
They can seed, but they also come back from their same roots. I want to go deep into how to actually have a good perennial wildflower patch or garden in your yard. But before that, Lisa Waters Lane is coming in with your garden questions after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Goshiki Holly. Goshiki translates from Japanese as holly with five colors. Its new leaves emerge red, then turn green. The entire top of this holly is draped in colors of cream, white, gray, yellow, and green. This evergreen makes the perfect accent, hedge, or evergreen container for its all-round good looks. A really nice plant that shines through winter is just $39. Waters Garden Center, where people who love Japanese gardens, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are people talking about other than snow? Yeah, it's all snow. <laughs> Just snow. No, this is what we need. We needed this. I was mm-hmm. talking last week uh, during the show that uh, we need cold and we need moisture. Your landscape needs this kind of uh, four season landscape needs this type of interaction with the weather and so sure. it was desperately dry this is actually going to mitigate some of the bugs mm-hmm. that could probably increase the weeds but uh, it'll get rid of some <laughs> of the bugs it's all good can't have everything that's about. right <laughs> so we've just spent the week basically digging and shoveling shoveling and still shoveling. the nursery's buried it's melting fast yes. like we like it does the good thing is that the snow that you see visually in your landscape, let's say out in Spring Valley, you had a you know eight, ten inches, twelve inches in Prescott on the ridge lines are over two feet or more. Mm-hmm. So what you see on the surface, that's how far it penetrates down into the ground. And so we had at our house two feet worth of twenty three inches or at something. <laughs> and it built yeah, I don't know how much melted before the next snow mm-hmm. came. It was over a process. So it's at least two feet. So it saturated the ground two feet, which most of your roots, even the largest of trees, they only go down about two feet because they know this is how the moisture hits in in the mountains of Arizona. And they're waiting there uh, for moisture to come so they can pick up as much as they can and rehydrate and plump Mm -hmm. back up. So this was a really good snow for the forest and for your landscape. Mm -hmm. So garden questions... That's all this segment's about. What do we got this okay. week? Well, they are all kind of snow-related, yeah, but what are you going to do? And the first one um, is from Janet. So this happens frequently with those big, heavy snows. She has some four-year-old emerald green arborvitaes yep. that that snow landed on it, heavy snow, wet snow, and, of course, they just kind of separate. Yeah. So now her question is, she knocked the snow off. What else can she do to help save those, help save the shape of them, and keep them healthy? Got their, They became famous in the, from the Midwest. In the Midwest, where you get a lot of snow all the time, uh, there you actually take twine, or tie tape is usually what we're using, that stretchable green tape. And before the snows hit, we are taking those multiple stems coming up, which forms this beautiful green globe, arborvita, uh, You'll tie them up so when the snow hits, they don't separate or collapse, you know, and willy nilly in the landscape. Uh, here, we don't necessarily do that. Some years we do, some years we don't. It depends on the snow. This year, we got a heavy snow. We got a snow like this maybe three or four years ago, mm-hmm. all at once. Um, so it's not unusual. It's just, well, I guess it's normal, but unusual. <laughs> or how do you? It's a common event, but not 
frequent. Let's put it that way. I don't know how to describe that. But anyway, take some, come in and get some green tie tape. It's very inexpensive. 100 feet is like, I don't know, four or five bucks. Tie up, bring those, the, the collapsed branches back and then tie it together so that it can, it can help support each other. If it still won't do that, it still wants to fall over, then you can take a stake or something and maybe inside of that green tie tape, stake it up so it holds it up straight. It's important when you get a really heavy snow like this, a lot of it, and it was heavy, very wet, which is what, what the forest needed, but your arbovita didn't need that much. Um, there, you just might have to stake it for a while, fertilize it so the next ring of, of, of wood solidifies and gets it to stay straight again. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll want to keep the weight off of your evergreens, not just arborvita, right. but all of your evergreens, especially the smaller ones. I'd say Deodor cedars, Arizona cypress, some of your smaller upright junipers. They're the most sensitive when they're young. Mm -hmm. as, the, as the bark increases, as those rings form over the years, it becomes very rigid, very strong. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about it as much. Right. Arborvita... You probably always have to worry about yeah. it. Always tie it up in the middle. I would say maybe that's a preventative yeah, type thing they much. should be doing. Yeah. So this is where the deciduous trees are a whole lot smarter yeah. than the evergreen Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> because the snow just falls through them. But yep. yeah, that's the chance you have when you have evergreens in your yard. But Stephen has a question. He, a week before the storm arrived, put out wildflower seed. Uh, and he wants to know, is this snow good, bad, indifferent for the seed? Stephen, you are a genius. <laughs> Even though you accidentally fell into it, you could not have asked for a better uh, event right after you spread your seed. Uh, whether it's a wild grass, a wild flowers, a meadow mix, all those native wildy stuff, they love this for two reasons. One, as the ground uh, receives all this moisture, uh, right afterwards, it's going to be really cold. And so you'll go really, I mean, we're talking like 10 degrees and it'll be 50 degrees, it'll be 10 degrees, it'll be 50 degrees. And so the ground starts to swell or heave. What that will do is it'll swallow up the seed even more. You'll get even better germination rate. So you're, I would even say if you haven't put your seed out yet, another, the next best thing you can do is spread your seed out over snow. Hmm. Now, believe it or not, put it on top of snow keep the birds off of it, but put it on top of snow as the snow melts and permeates and goes down, it settles down, um, and, and you'll get a better germination rate. Again, that ground will heave, it'll swell up, and then it'll shrink up. Then it'll swell up at night, it'll swell, and then it, during the day it'll shrink as it freezes and thaws, and so it, it just almost envelops or, or devours the seed. Mm -hmm. And so you'll get a much better take than having a dry, crusty soil right. with no moisture in sight. That's not ideal. Then you got to add to the moisture. you got to irrigate. It's just not as consistent right. as a good, strong, deep snow like this. It's mm -hmm. perfect. Oh, my gosh. It is. Perfect. You folks that that tilled your garden soils, you got them all rich, put all those manures in, and you're waiting for it to settle. This is perfect for mm -hmm. that. So you can start planting by the end of February, March, you'll be ready to put lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower down. Yeah. All right. So we have another question as well from Angie. She says, my husband put out some rock salt to help melt a walkway. I do have some ground cover junipers nearby. Is that going to be a problem? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Plants don't like salt. Especially junipers, they don't like salt. Now, if they're established or big, they're robust, probably you can compensate, especially if we get some more moisture. It looks like we've got, I don't know how much moisture, but some more water coming out of the way. It'll help flush that out. The best thing you can do for rock salt, first of all, they're ice melts. There's types of ice melts that are more salty, like rock salt. It's very bad for your, for your landscape. All of all plants, no plant likes salt. The other one is they've got varieties that are safe for landscapes. Mm -hmm. You probably want to invest if you've got some landscapes, especially near the driveway, pathways, walkway, you know, up to the front door where you've got the plants. I would say don't use rock salt, use the varieties that don't damage plants. If you do have a lot of salt and you're worried about it, and you think that might be damaged, you're not, just not sure, gypsum. Gypsum is what flushes salt from the soil. When you read the bag, it says, oh, it melts rock. We'll, we'll make roots grow through <laughs> solid caliche. 
that's not true. What, what gypsum really does it salt or minerals will clog up the pores of the soil and it helps the water to flush all that mineral out of your soil that's truly what it does and then it's calcium nitrate adds some calcium so we really add gypsum to our vegetable gardens to increase the calcium rate so we have less blossom end rot but truly what calcium does is it helps flush the soil from minerals. So it helps very tight poured, you know, clay type of soils that clog up easily. It helps those to flush those minerals out and keep the soil open, airy, so the roots can go through it. It doesn't really liquefy you know, the, the rock. Just nothing does that except a jackhammer. Even that has a hard time with it. <laughs> so anyway, gypsum is probably your best bet. And don't use Take that rock salt away from your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't think about, oh, yeah, maybe not a good idea. Yeah. Um, so I had a lot of questions. People concerned, you know what? I've got two feet of snow sitting on my plants in my pots. Do I need to uncover those plants or let it melt? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, open it up because plants like the sunlight. They don't like to be buried. So if you can sweep that off, especially your evergreens, more so than maybe your deciduous things that don't have leaves in the winter, your evergreens will appreciate being opened up so they can see the sunlight. Uh, that'll help them. It just helps them. Mm-hmm. It helps them from, from getting deformed as well, that kind of stuff. So absolutely. Well, that's it for this segment. Great questions this week. Ken Elisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Prescott Alberta Spruce. This perfectly shaped tree displays dense green needles which are as soft as a teddy bear. The perfect front yard Christmas tree for holiday lighting and oh, so beautiful when matched in pairs at the front door. Hand grown, these are perfectly shaped and sized for home accents and just $69. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love twinkly little Christmas trees, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So the Garden Center Magazine, I think with the Garden Center Association, you know, there's a bunch of retail folks. I think there's 18,000 garden centers. Most of them are family-owned, virtually all of them, or ESOP, that is employee-owned types of businesses. So it's a small, intimate, we kind of know each other. Well, they took a survey. I think they lined up with Pew or someone, some big survey company, and asked gardeners, what they plan on doing this year out in the gardens. And this kind of, I thought it was super interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. So 64%, again, they're talking to homeowners. 64% agreed home means more to me than it did a year ago. I think I'm seeing this with customers here at the garden center here in Prescott. It used to be I was planting at my house. I'm going to travel later. I'm going to go play someplace or take the RV or going out. But it wasn't really home. It was was just an asset, a house. Now it actually means where family gathers. It's where I work. It's where I play. It's where I work out. It's, it means more now. And I think that's what they're saying with this. So home means more to me than it did a year ago. 60% said I have bigger plans for my home than I did a year ago. They're not just saying gardens. They just included remodeling, repainting. Gardening was part of that, but 60% are planning on going They have bigger plans. 55% affirmed, I'm more excited about the things I can do to make my home special than I was a year ago. 
And I think we've all been decorating. I think the we've repainted, redone a lot in our house, decluttered a lot of things. So I can actually park two cars in our garage. So it's just just thinking through because you're there and you're you're doing stuff. More heat bought another heater so I can enjoy the outdoor patio longer. Uh, so I can go into the season further. And so it's just to kind of I think this is this is a trend that hopefully our home means more than it did uh, a year ago. Family, gatherings, what's truly important. So we're seeing that. And so you're starting to see the garden center, at least waters, and we're partnering partnering with quite a few garden centers. So all the northern Arizona garden centers, we know each other. And it's hard for one store to fill up an entire semi-tractor trailer full of trees or shrubs. So if you can share that, hit a farm, get their, whatever they specialize in. Okay, they're fruit trees. Let's all share a fruit tree truck. And we'll drop it off at Warner's, but Flagstaff. You could drop by Waters, and we'll go over to Plant Fair over in Payson, and drop over to Christopher's over in the White Mountains, Pine Top Lakeside. And so those, those trucks are rolling, and we've had those. We're starting to fill the garden center up. So we had nothing but our winter mix, mainly evergreens. And it's been a good time to buy evergreens because you can see what they truly look like in middle of winter. But then we were we were really short on aspens and maples and all those spring bloomers and lilacs and the fruit trees. Well, that is starting to change. And so you can start to plant those. The second the ground is, is workable, you can put them in the ground. Don't feel like, oh, but it's still winter. I can't plant. No, that's that, those are tropical plants. If you're in the desert, that could be the case. Uh, but here in a four-season climate, we're trying to bring those plants in before they wake up, before the buds swell. While they're still completely asleep, we're bringing, we're filling the garden center up with those deciduous plants. Deciduous means drops its leaves in the fall. It, that's what it means. So it's they're bare. So the trees that don't have foliage on them now, those are deciduous all of them. And so we try to bring those types of plants in, which would be your fruit trees, your shade trees, your spring blooming trees, uh, many of your summer blooming things. They're all coming in now. And so you can grab and put those in the ground. Ideally, if you can plant them, so when they do wake up the end of February, March, whenever spring starts to hit, they kind of wake up in your landscape and go, whoa, I don't, what, where am I at? What's, what's going on here? I, I don't remember this place. It must be okay because my roots are in the ground. Let's go ahead and grow. And so it just takes off a new growth. You'll get less transplant shock by doing that. The suggestion I can give you this year is because gardening is a big trend, there's lots of new homes. It's not just a few. Like there's twice as many newcomers than we've seen in past years. People are moving around, migrating, changing locations, and moving from the big city. We're seeing quite a few from, from NorCal coming in, and they've been there, the Bay Area, for years, and they said, you know what? We were going to retire. We just decided to retire early because as long as we got bandwidth and we could work online, we can retire five years early and live here and still have an income, and, and, and we're seeing that over and over. Well, the demand for... The, the landscape materials, plants especially, because it's a living, breathing thing that takes you know, 10 years to grow a big maple tree. It's You had to plan 10 years ago for this. It's not like, oh, we had COVID this year. Well, I wonder if we can put another 100 units into production. No, it takes 10 years. It takes a while. So that stuff, you kind of want to talk to your local garden center in Prescott Valley or in in. Pine Top Lakeside or, or Kingman or wherever you happen to be at here in the Central Highlands, come to Waters. I'd love to share with you. But know when those rotations, when the crop harvests are, and so you can be kind of first in line, first dibs. So pottery's already here for the spring. Trees are starting to show up now for the spring. And so we'll keep this production going week after week until the until all two plus acres are filled with plants of the gills. Got a lot in store for you. Got uh, Lisa Waters Lane coming back in for her garden segment after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. 
brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we're back with Ken and Lisa Lane here discussing gardening in the mountains of Arizona. And this segment is for Lisa, just to get a different perspective, different angle. And yes, we've been married a lot of years. <laughs> is, is it a lot as in a negative way or a lot as in yay? I don't know. How do you feel a about that? <laughs> How, what would your therapist ask you? <laughs> anyway, uh, we still have different garden techniques different styles oh, yeah. different very much uh, so we kind of it's, we like to garden together but we've got different ways of looking at yes, things yes when you get out the electric hedger i tend to just walk away slowly I only do that <laughs> when i know you've got a hair appointment or something now you're gone for half a day and i've got some time to seriously butcher <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know i like things more manicured you like things completely wild no there's a fine line in between and it can be achieved yep i think we've got a great but not landscape. with an electric hedger well okay or pruner now that's now, why she's got this segment <laughs> now it's even worse because you have these battery operated pruners oh yeah oh my gosh oh my gosh not OSHA approved at all, but it will <laughs> cut through an inch, inch and a half stem with just a click of a button. It just goes zip right in there. Got it from China. <laughs> so all, I don't think you can get it anywhere legally elsewhere, yeah. but boy, does it make the job go faster. Just keep your fingers out of the way. I, I makes me nervous. I always have the 911 on speed dial when you start using that thing. <laughs> And I'm looking for ice bags to put body parts in that you've accidentally <laughs> it's cut It's really off. helpful at the garden. I got it for the garden center because I'm, when you're going to prune, you know, a hundred trees and trim them, shape them, make sure they keep their form, it can really wear on your, your muscles. So this one mm -hmm. just goes, I can, let's prune another hundred trees. So I would not recommend it for the average gardener. No, probably I'm not true. even sure I probably recommend true. it for you. I'm careful. <laughs> Everyone said that before their finger was lopped <laughs> off. <Yeah. laughs> Or so, they fell off the ladder. Enough about my safety <laughs> yes. uh, uh, issues. Uh huh. So we, before this last storm, we were talking with our team and we're going, oh my goodness, spring is going to hit early. Because yeah, it had been so warm. It was so pleasant. We're like, okay, let's bump up our trucks. Let's get it, yeah, start true. getting product in earlier. Yep. So we thought we were geniuses. Yep. Little did we know. I've gone weather. <laughs> So it does it. Yep. So we've been furiously trying to clear our parking lot because we knew we had semis arriving with new stuff. Hundreds of trees, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of trees. The first big load right. of uh, mainly deciduous, that is, mm -hmm. fruit trees, shade trees came in. A few, few evergreens. Right. Uh, but it was a big truck and a lot of them. It was. So I thought I would let people know what we oh, have good. in case there's, you know, like this pent up demand. Which yeah. actually there is. There is. No, people have been waiting. They've been chomping <laughs> they at the have. bits. They've and been I waiting for these. You, dude, I mean, really, don't wait. Right. Buy them even though you can't see the ground. And then yeah. plant them at your leisure when you're ready, when the mm -hmm. ground does open up. Even if it snows again. Oh, yeah. Plants like that. They're fine it with helps that. Them. Yeah. They're, we're like not you said, go they're mostly them. deciduous. They're not yeah. going to be harmed by this. So anyways, I thought I'd talk about a few that we've had or have gotten in, especially ones that people really desire. Yeah. Um, so we did get some nice 
good size um, autumn blaze maples in. So at the end of the season last fall, I think we went through every yeah. single autumn and blaze get more, we had. Yeah. And you just couldn't get more. So this is a fresh load in. And we've got all sizes from 28-inch size container buckets instantaneous down into like seven (laughs) five gallons so just some nice varieties of that that autumn blaze is just a beautiful shade tree out there in the yard great fall color i don't know that you can beat it well maybe you could for fall color it's got a traditional maple leaf and it's red it's the fastest growing of the red maples that grows here locally and the beauty of the autumn blaze is it doesn't get wind tattered so Mm -hmm. so so many the wind is ferocious. It tends to tear up some of the some of the varieties. This one it doesn't. So mm-hmm. you'd think it would, but it's a great choice. This is one too bigger. If you're thinking instant tree, okay, they're going to be two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. They're big. I mean, they're instant. I mean, they're they've been they're ancient, mm-hmm. uh, and we run out. You can't get very many of those. If you're thinking a small one, a little you know eighty dollar, seventy gallon. I mean, they're nice, yeah. but they're not. They're they're going to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big tree, this is one you want to grab while the loads are in because they won't be here in a month. They won't right. be here in two months for sure. You want to snag them, put your name on them so you got them because there's just not enough of them on the marketplace. Mm-hmm. We also got in some great clump aspen uh, and some clump birch. And okay. both of those you know, perform nicely here. They're very desirable trees. Sometimes it's hard to find those bigger clumps. So now's a good time to snag them. But we have you know f- many different sizes. But uh, I just think they're a beautiful tree. And especially in the wintertime. Oh, you yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. You know, aspen's the number one seller. Of course, aspens grow wild mm-hmm. throughout the mountains of Arizona. That's part of the reason, part of the appeal of the mountains is because of the aspens and ponderosa groves. But really, birch does even better. It's yeah. hardier. It's stronger. It takes more fleck, different types of soils. Mm-hmm. It's more adaptive right. than an aspen. Uh, and they have the same white bark. The leaf is a little different. Mm-hmm. So trembling leaf aspen, populus tremuloides. This is the Latin for it. Ooh, he used Latin. aspen. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, you'll, I know that's a turn on too when I speak Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Especially by candlelight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, what's the botanical for birch? Uh, betula. Oh, very good. Yeah, there you go. Pass. Trying, trying to keep up. <laughs> so, great ones of those. We also got in some uh, red buds. So, we've got Eastern, we've got Oklahoma, we have Forest Pansy, and we have Merlot. Ooh, I like I that know. one. That's my favorite. So, lots of nice different varieties of red buds. The red bud is that beautiful tree in the spring that blooms with those really bright pink blossoms almost yeah fluorescent dark, yeah, yeah just absolutely stunning so lots of nice ones of those put the oklahoma and the eastern put on a beautiful green kind of heart-shaped leaf yeah. and your mallows and your forest pansies do more of a burgundy and leaf. redbud they are a native to northern arizona you'll find si- you'll find them at about the three thousand foot level and above they're at all different varieties so, but we've, they've, they're so tough that we've bred or created some new varieties that are equally as hardy, but they're even prettier. Yeah, definitely. We also got in some crab apples, another one of my favorite trees, just yeah. for its hardiness and beautiful, beautiful blossoms. So you just, they bloom a little bit later than some of the other spring stuff, but gorgeous when they bloom. And the new varieties they've come out with are just spectacular. The prairie fires. Um, they came out with one called Coral. Coral Beauty? No. Coral Bark? Coral. Coral something. It'll come to me. Coral Carl? <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Just make it up there. That's fine. <laughs> uh, but another tree that just really not a lot of disease gets to into, just a happy tree out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's the brightest of the colors of all the trees. So from the purest white to purples and yellows and reds it's just mm-hmm. got some bright bright colors to it and it doesn't get big crab apples typically top out about 20 feet right. some of them are, don't top out more than 12 they're mm-hmm. little trees yeah so they're just easy Fit to nicely maintain in the landscape oh yeah it's coral burst coral burst coral burst that's explosive <laughs> and of course as you mentioned we got a lot of the fruit trees in we've got probably i think five different apple varieties mm-hmm. in 
uh, the other ones that we got in in the apples are the three in one and the four in one Ooh, cocktail trees. Uh, yes, yeah. so that's the ones where you're you're putting multiple varieties of trees. You're grafting them on, um, but excellent for those small yards where you can't fit six trees in. We also got some espalier Fuji apple trees. So. You might explain espalier really quick. It just means two dimensional, flat, <laughs> up against fences, walls. Yeah, uh, that's their it's garden, a great space garden saver. arc it kind of mm-hmm. structures. You use them mm-hmm. like fencing. Right. Uh, if you have a real tight space, let's say Prescott Valley, you've got those smaller backyards with the six foot fence. Mm-hmm. They're right up against the fence. It's great for that. Produces the same Fuji apple, but they just made them to look more artistic. Basically, right. The cocktail trees; those are both of those varieties will run out very oh, soon. Yeah. They go quick. Because there's such a limited supply, mm-hmm. uh, and they're so unusual, they're funky. Right. Uh, when you've got four different apples coming off of one tree, that's crazy. We also have one that's a oh, just real quick. Oh, I can't tell you. You'll have to come in and see. Is it a really apple? cool? Is it, you, you, you're such a tease. <laughs> I love value. It's really cool. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Did you know that plants can help you sleep better naturally? At Waters Garden Center, we have beautiful houseplants that not only look great, they clean the air we breathe. Get this. Some plants can actually produce oxygen at night and even take mold spores out of the air, making for less tossing and turning and more beauty sleep. Don't lose sleep. Rise and shine with unique, gorgeous houseplants for your best rest yet at Waters Garden Center. Sweet dreams. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week, our True Blue Fat Albert Spruce. At just 15 feet, this is the ideal evergreen for small gardens, excellent in front yards with limited space. The color is so blue all year long with the perfect evergreen shape and just $74. Dense, durable, and loves the sun, so it works well as a windbreak, screen, or sound barrier, and only found at... Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, for people who love the perfect blue spruce, love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. If you're tuned into this show, you probably live up in the mountains, thus the name, the Mountain Gardener. So it's higher elevation. It's different. It's not harder. I guess there are some challenges, but you just have to learn how to work with the environment instead of against it. And all of a sudden, your garden success just goes skyrocketing. So there's some tips, and that's why you tune into this. so You can get some insider tips, some garden hacks that help you figure this thing out. And once you figure it out, you got it. You just start sharing that with neighbors and friends and family. And that's the beauty of gardening. It's very social. Right now, uh, the mountains of Arizona is one of the famous things we have. We're famous for our our fall color, our pine forests, and our wildflowers. In the spring, the wildflowers are spectacular. I guess we're also famous for those spiky southwestern like agaves and yuccas and the, the prickly pears. We aren't famous for saguaros at the higher elevations. Those are more of a desert thing, but we do have some very beautiful choyas and things like that. But really, it's more the, the agaves. But that's those spring-blooming wildflowers are stunning. And you can have some in your own backyard. It's not very difficult. It's just getting the timing right. You need to put wildflowers down when it's cold. In the winter, you need more freeze, thaw, snow, frost, freeze. It loves that. So those wildflowers need it specifically to scarify or crack the hole open, especially if you want to go California poppies. That's probably the most difficult to grow. If you try to start a California poppy patch by seed in your yard and it's spring, we're not having freeze and thaw, you'll struggle. There, if, if I'm helping you here at Waters Garden Center, I'll probably tell you, throw those seed in the freezer for a couple of days. Pull them out for a day. Put them back in for a day. So you're artificially 
scarifying or opening up or cracking those holes open. So now you can go plant them and they'll germinate for you. So we increase the germination rate. Well, you don't have to do that if you simply work with nature and put it out there in the winter. This is when you plant those. Those are also the, the shortcuts I find. And let me tell you the dirty secret in our industry. Many times you'll see wildflowers and they're very inexpensive. And so those are going to be annual flower seeds. That is, it's a wildflower. It's marigolds or something. And, and so you can spread them out there, zinnias, but they won't come back for you. They won't come back from the roots. They have to recede or you won't get any, you, won't, you get one year. It's a one year wonder. If you're going to take the time to spread wildflowers out in your gardens, you want a better quality perennial wildflower and you want them to be wild. You want them to be from here, not from this elevation. I mean, ideally, if you can have a a Sherpa out there and picking the wildflowers from the gardens or on the hillsides and bringing them in and creating a package. And that's what you can put in your yard. So that's perfect. And we've got some seed like that, uh, but those are truly wild and they're perennial. They'll come back every year for you. A perennial will come back from its actual root, come back larger than it went to sleep. So it typically hibernates underground. They will come back with a vengeance next spring. And then they also seed. So you get both. You get them to come back from the roots and they reseed. That's what you want. A good, another insider secret is many times, you know, wildflowers, they're like gold. You might as well, they're kind of like the price of gold. They're expensive for a good mix. Uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll cut, they'll cut it. They'll make it look like it's of more value by adding vermiculite. Vermiculite is a real light, airy, Additive that typically they add to soil, but sometimes they'll add it to seed. And so it's kind of a way of cheating. It makes a big package look like it's full of wildflower seed, but really it's mainly vermiculite, but not. We don't do that at Waters. I'm just telling you, this is what I see sometimes, especially price conscious stores. You know which box I'm talking about. You'll see a, a wildflower seed there that is, it's, it's, it's all filler, a little bit of annual color. Boy. You could go with, there's so few seed and they're all annuals. It's so cheap that they put a pa fancy package wrapper around it just to make it look like it has some value. That's not the kind you want to buy and put in your yard. You want a good quality mix. We make our own seed mix here. So we're, we're blending our own wild. We're taking the seed that grows wild here. We've got a Rocky Mountain mix. It's more showy, taller. Probably have to irrigate a little bit. Uh, we've got an Arizona mix. That was the first mix I ever created. It's truly what you see on the side of the road, kind of the wild, truly wild. And we've got a deer and rabbit proof mix because so many homes are going up in the forest where deer and rabbit are just ravaging the gardens. And then we have a butterfly and hummingbird mix and a pure poppy mix. So poppy, California poppy is pretty, but if you can go with orange and white and red and yellow and we made this mix of different kinds of poppies. They're all California poppies, but there's different genetics that help it come up. When you're spreading your seed, here are some insider tips that really make a difference that I've noticed just over the years really ups your game. One, don't waste your seed. I've had several folks make mistakes. You've got this hillside. They've rip-wrapped it. It's starting to wash away. I need some plants. I'll just throw some seed and it'll come up magically. That is not how seed works. That's how they work in nature. But nature has millions of seed it throws over there, you know, and 1% comes up and it still looks good. You want 100% of your seed to germinate. So now you want to, to rake that ground open, to open it up. So I'll take a stiff rake, just rake it and get all the chunks off the top. I just want to open up the earth, get rid of the rocks, the old roots. Really makes a difference. Then you can spread your seed on top of that. Then you'll usually I'll take my stiff tine rake and just scooch it back and forth over top of that. And that's really all you do. I'll put a bag of mulch over top of that just to keep the birds off because birds will be very, they've got a ferocious appetite right now. They're hungry. There's not as much for them to eat, especially with the snow. They can't get to their normal food that they'll, they'll go after. So they'll be after your seed. The last thing you want to do is spread the world's most expensive bird seed out there. So to put a little layer, maybe quarter inch, half inch, no more than half inch of, of just premium mulch is what we, we use, will keep the birds off, increase the germination rate. A little trick I use too, especially for larger patches, 
I'll take a bag of, of Waters Premium Mulch. It's a screen down real tight, and I'll add that. I'll just open it up, dump it into a wheelbarrow. And then I'll add my, my wildflower seeds to that mulch, and I'll blend it all together. I'm creating my own hydro mulch. And so some of these seeds, like a flax seed, you can barely see. That thing is so tiny. It makes this huge plant, but you can barely see the seed. Some of them are real light and feathery. They just almost blow away. Well, I don't want that. I want to know right where it's going. So if I blend it in a wheelbarrow, my all my seed together, then I can spread that mulch out. Now I can actually see directly where it's going to come up. I can see visually where those garden seed are going to come up. Real easy trick. It takes no more time. It actually helps you get it more evenly spread out throughout the gardens. It's a game changer. It really helps. Two additives I'll put on top of that seed bed when I'm all done. One, um, Humic, H-U-M-I-C, Humic. Humic is humic acid. Um, it's a granular, but it, what it does, it feeds the soil. So the, when the, that taproot comes in, the, it sees soil that's alive, and it goes, whoa, um, oh, this is going to be exciting. I'm going to grow here. This, it forms a deeper root structure. So it's really, it's not really a food for the plant. It's food for the soil. So your mycorrhizals, your worms, the beneficials start to, to be activated. So the plants react to that and root deeper. Secondly, when it's all all done, I'll put down a fertilizer. I do want to feed these plants as they come up, but don't use a synthetic fertilizer. Use an organic. And so I spread on top of my, my seed 744 all-purpose plant food. It's a fertilizer put together. Again, I like making, I like the science of, of gardening. We make our own fertilizers. We make our own wildflower seed because it's fun. Uh, but that fertilizer's cottonseed meal. Cottonseed meal really activates a plant's girth, size, gets you more foliage, which means more flowers. So scrape the earth, blend up your seed in your wheelbarrow with, a, with your seed, spread that out as evenly as you can. I would take my stiff tine rake and kind of get it as smooth as I can, fertilize it with the 7-4 all-purpose food, and then right after that, at the same time, put the humec down, pray for more snow. You'll have an unbelievable, unbelievable patch of wildflowers this spring. I mean, it, it'll be glorious. That's how you do wildflowers. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Spring is the best time to be outdoors, garden, and create a personal oasis in your yard. If you don't know where to start, Water's Personal Garden Service allows you to book an hour of one-on-one -on -one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $200 gift card and we'll line you up with one of Water's private gardeners. You're going to love your yard again. Water's Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott or at watersgardencenter.com. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter, and your soil is, well, pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and odorless, so we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert, Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. You know, I was talking about wildflowers and, and the way we create ours, we order the parts, mix them up. We have this bulk bin with a scoop and you just kind of scoop up the wildflowers mix that you like some fun things you can do don't feel limited to just what your garden center puts together if you love yellows we'll grab some more echinacea or some more gallardias and blend add to take the mix and add to it if you love poppies but you also want some salvias or sages or some other things well you could take that mix and add some more poppies to it so you can skew it when you blend that together, it's going to go in a bulk bag. Just shake and bake it. Just shake it up. Add it to your mulch, your wheelbarrow full of mulch. Blend it all together. 
you just made a personalized mix that's going to be kind of your thumbprint, your personality growing in your gardens. It's an easy way to do that. Wildflowers are super easy to grow. Uh, we're naturally grow wildflowers here. And if a gardener touches them and nurses them and kind of nurtures those seeds, boy, they really do well. Uh, so you just enjoy them. They'll come in the waves of, of flowers. And then at the very end of the season, usually in November, December sometimes, sometime when I'm bored, I'll go out and take a weed whacker and I'll just whack them down to the ground before the snow comes. So I'll do that before we get our first major weather event. Usually in December, we get some snow. Obviously, January, we get a lot of snow. I want to weed whack that down. And what I'm trying to do is take those seed that were forming last summer and fall, and I want those just to be sent all over the yard, all over that part of the landscape. And so it expands your wildflower patch. I've done it with lawnmowers before. Just kind of take a lawnmower, just go right over it. It's done. That's it. I don't do any other care than that. Uh, some of my seed producing flowers, I'll leave that seed up there for the birds. So echinaceas are a big one. They'll, they'll actually take that and use that as a food source. I'll find lots of, lots of little birds rummaging around the back landscape because they're after the seed. I like to attract the birds into my, my yard. Gallardia is the same way. I, I like to leave some of those up so I won't prune those back. I leave some of the seed for my birds. We go through a lot of this kind of stuff. So this weekend we had a class on wildflowers. I actually showed you physically how to do this. The week before that, it was how to design a landscape. How do you go about that? The very first class in February would be how to prepare garden soils. What additives, what nutrients, how do you get them where they're... If you struggled getting production out of your flowers or your vegetables, come to this class. You'll be an expert on how to prep soil from this point forward. Whether it's a raised bed, a container, you'll just go in depth with that. And it keeps going. So mountain fruit trees are after that. Then it's gardening for newcomers. Evergreens that bloom early. And it just keeps going. Watersgardencenter.com. If you want to see the entire class schedule, there's a big button on the homepage that says classes. It's not hard to find. Another tip, too, I can give you is we are starting, like, like a lot of small businesses, we're showing off our inventory online. You can buy trees online from Waters Garden Center. I'm not going to ship them to New York. you got to be local. It's just for us here within earshot of this show. It's for you. You can buy it. Come pick it up. Have your landscaper pick it up. What I'm finding is folks are using it as a research tool. So we had a huge load of, tr of trees come in this week. The next day, they were all featured, price, descriptions, photos, with leaves, not without leaves, on our website, top10plants.com. You can get there. That takes you right there. You can see if you want to research what kind of crab apple, it's right there. It's a great tool. And the descriptions we have... That's how it's going to grow here in the mountains of Arizona. Not some other place where it's native. But it's going to grow here at 20 feet. Other places, 25. So we're trying to be very specific on how it grows. Top10plants.com or watersgardenton.com. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. 
Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.